Welcome back to HLN. All right, Jody Arias continuing her testimony here in the death penalty murder trial and where we have left off. And by the way, things are getting pretty graphic, so we're going to take a moment away from the trial. And when things clean up a little bit, we'll, we'll take you back in there. But bottom line, she's told the story. She's been baptized into the Mormon faith, baptized by Travis Alexander. But yet they go back to her house and now they're going to they're uh, basically having sexual relations. So let's bring in our attorneys. Uh, Jeff Gold, Monica Lindstrom back with us. So again, guys, uh, let's face it. You know, at this point, Travis Alexander doesn't look good. I mean, this is supposed to be this holy spiritual day. And Monica, I'll start with you. And yet what's on his mind? Sex. Well, I, I wouldn't say that he looks bad. I think he looks like your typical red-blooded male. I mean, he, he has the sexual desires, and so this is what's going on. I think it makes him look bad in the sense that it's happening right after he baptized right. her <laughs> into his church. So that, that's starting to play into the defense theory that he's not this pious, righteous, virginal man. He's got these other things on his mind. And what I also found interesting is her testimony this morning that there really wasn't a whole lot of emotions with him. It seemed to pretty much be just physical with him. Right. And I think these two things so far are really helping the defense in its theory. Yeah, no, and, and just to clarify my point there about him looking bad, it isn't the red-blooded guy who's got urges. This is, he has just baptized her into the Mormon faith. We're right. not talking that long after that, and he's wanting to have sex. Jeff, weigh in on this. Holy moly! Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I think the death penalty is off the table now. Wow. Uh, I, I think you have this fella. Uh, yesterday, uh, we heard he hands her the Book of Mormon, and the next thing, there's uh, uh, oral sex in the car. The next day you hear he's asked for anal sex. The next thing you hear is uh, that on the day of the baptism, he's the one who baptized her. She specifically asked him to baptize her in their church clothes after the baptism. He pulls her over the, the bed and y you know what happens now, anal sex. What is that? That the death penalty is off the table. These public defenders have done their job. In the end, I think she's going to get convicted. But all this testimony is going to mean she doesn't get uh, put to death. Okay, before we take a break, Monica, do you agree with that? That's pretty bold there from Jeff that, that these two instances he's talking about could mean she doesn't get the death penalty. And we've only begun. Yeah. <laughs> There's more to come. I I don't think that's enough to take the death penalty off the table because I don't think what he's doing right now or what she's explaining, it was consensual, so I don't think they can use it as abuse. Got it. So I, I think that's going a little far, Jeff, but okay, we'll see. Okay, we'll continue the debate and continue to monitor testimony. We'll take a quick break. Jody Arias, she's continuing her testimony. We're monitoring. That's right. This is about dirtying up the victim. I mean, that, that's the strategy here. It's really not ending up in a question of self-defense, although that is the rubric that is being used to get this into evidence. What it's about is saying he's a bad person, he's a hypocrite, he talks about Mormonism on the one hand, and then you know what afterwards. I mean, that's what this is about, dirty up the victim, because in the end, when it comes to the death penalty, very few people get the death penalty, and it takes a lot for a jury to do it, killing multiple people people, killing law enforcement, killing in specific, in very heinous ways so that this could qualify for it. But when you don't like the victim in some way, when you, uh, the defendant, uh, victim, when you think the defendant has been in some way abused, now that's not legally abused, but, but when she feels like a prostitute, she feels used, he's baptizing her and then doing, you know, you know what to her. Those are kind of things that are going to make the jury somewhat sympathetic and at very least, even if they don't acquit her, which I don't think they will, they will not put her to death. Yeah. That's where I think this goes. Well, great point there for both of you, that dirty up the victim. And coming up in the in this court case, we could be listening to, I'm not sure we're going to listen to, it's going to get pretty graphic, a phone sex tape, where from what we believe, he does not look good in that either. Much more on the Jody Arias murder trial coming up. We're going to be talking to someone who was inside the courtroom. Uh, Jeff, do you think, I mean, if, if you're Juan Martinez and you're looking over at that jury, do you think she's connecting with them? Are they feeling sympathy for her at this point? Uh, I think she is connecting with both the men and the women. Now, remember, this is direct testimony. You know, this is, this is their version. Uh, the prosecutor can play this in reverse. Uh, he could probably put on a witness. I don't know if it's on a witness or a friend who uh, Travis described her as a nymphomaniac. 
So all the times, you know, they're the only ones in the room, both for the murder and all these sexual acts. So therefore, if she says it happened this way, well, you know, where's Travis to dispute it? There may be other ways, including friends that can say he described her as a nymphomaniac. So it's it's she that wants sex so quickly. And and let's, you know, you know, he's, he's got to do something about that. Uh, but ultimately, none of this is going to justify murder as we've seen it right now. Uh, it will crescendo later on. Right. Uh, the easiest way to lie about things is to do things in reverse you know uh, you, you you tell the same set of facts but you say who did who initiated it in reverse etc so right. that may be what she's doing and maybe what Juan can do and to your point even a couple of defense witnesses Daryl Brewer ex-boyfriend and Ryan uh, Barnes and other uh, Burns an ex-boyfriend basically said she was you know aggressive sexually at, at times so you know you've kind of already hit on that point we'll get Monica's take when we come back quick break much more on the Joe